it's Friday night. Who's bringing the beer? I'm sure you've all heard this a time or two in your life. Well, this is an issue. With summer fast approaching, it means parties that will extend into the dark of the night and sometimes early morning. Today, I want to talk to you about why the drinking age should stay at 21. Take Ethan Couch, for example. 16 years old, gets drunk, gets into a car, and kills four people. And here's a video that I want to show you about what he has to go through now. This is what we call a separation cell. And this is what Ethan Couch calls home for now, where it could be an even smaller cell. This is what we call a single cell. The difference you see is smaller square footage and no showers. Either way, you get the picture. Do you want to live your life like that? I don't think so. According to a report done by CNN, in the early 1970s, more than half of the U.S. lowered their drinking age to 18. They finally realized this was bad, so in the 1990s, 20 years later, they raised the drinking age back to 21 due to legal issues. Texas has a zero tolerance law, so where if you're drinking and driving under 21, you go straight to jail, no questions asked. There are three things associated with underage drinking. Drunk driving, binge drinking, and alcohol poisoning, and alcohol-associated behaviors. My first point is drunk driving kills people. According to MAD, Mad Mothers Against Drunk Driving, 17,000 individuals die each year. The highest drunk driving rates were found among 28, 21 to 25 with 23.4 percent and 18 to 20 years old with 15.1 percent. After age 25, the drunking rates decreased. This means it should stay at 21 because of these stats. The fatalities caused by drinking and driving would likely rise as well. Taking that chance seems irresponsible. In an article in Mad's Driven Magazine, put it, promoting responsible drinking and driving is like promoting responsible drive-by shootings. My second point I want to go into is alcohol poisoning. It, kill, it kills people. According to the Center for Science and the Public Interest, 44% of students attending four-year colleges drink alcohol at the binge level or greater. As many as 30,000 college students need medical treatment each year to cope with alcohol poisoning. News reports that 157 college-aged individuals ages 18 to 23 drank themselves to death in 1999 through 2005. And this is all over a dumb beer, or maybe a couple. Some people might say, if you're old enough to fight for your country, vote for your rights, and have a permanent license, or even buy a house, then why can't you drink at 18? Well, this is because alcohol affects parts of the brain that control your movement, your judgment, your memory, your speech, all before your brain becomes developed at age 24. And then this is a picture of the brain from age five, and this is probably like age 18, and then age 20, you can tell the difference between the two that they're not fully developed. My last point I wanna talk about is it causes violent behavior sometimes. Alcohol is associated with an increased risk of hazardous sexual behavior, academic failure, drug abuse, and alterations to the structure and the function of the brain. Up to 86% of homicide offenders, 37% of assault offenders, and 60% of sexual offenders were using alcohol at the time of the crime. <clears throat> Other studies have shown that 75% of male students and 55% of female students involved in date rape were drunk or using drugs. So today, we have talked about why underage drinking causes drunk and reckless driving, how binge drinking and alcohol are dangerous to your body, and drinking under the age causes violent behaviors and crime. I hope you now agree that the drinking age 
should remain at 21 years old and make smart decisions next time you decide to drink.